Okay. Oh, let's do the cropping and the sizing, and then we'll go to some different types of views. Okay, so here's the deal. I got my floor plan view. Let me zoom on out a few times. In fact, I can even choose a zoom to fit. So here's my deal. This view is actually just sort of very large right now. It's kind of hanging around. It doesn't really have bounds. So everything, everything that's possible to be shown in here will be displayed when we try and put it on the sheet. And what happens often is you got more than will actually fit on the sheet, so you want to crop it down to make it sort of fit a specific section. Okay, so how do you do that? You do that as follows. You come on down in here, you say that you want to crop the view. Okay, not much seems to have happened. Let me zoom on out. I'll let me show this right next to it, show the crop region. Okay, those two things I would really like to have turned on at the same time, but they're really considered two separate controls. The crop region is the boundary. You can crop or not crop. But what you end up doing is, if you turn on cropping and show the crop region, this will actually be the boundary of what gets placed on the view or placed on the sheet. So I could zoom on in and say, really, that's the region of interest right here. Okay. So you'll want to crop your views so they fit better. And in terms of what's going on with the views, for the most of the views that were set up in the initial template we gave you for assignment one, they had some sort of cropping set up. You may need to sort of adjust the cropping. If your building was very tall or extended to the left or right very far, you may need to sort of adjust the bounds of the cropping so that you're getting your, your building into that sort of range of what's visible in that view. OK. Let's go ahead and with that cropping, we can try cropping a different view. Let me, for example, crop an elevation. Zoom out. Here's another example. This is the elevation view. You may have elevation views that look like this. If I'd like to adjust the cropping, well, let me do this. Let me adjust the uh, scaling to quarter scale, because I tend to like these at quarter scale. I can turn on cropping, say show the crop region. And really, all I want to focus on is this area, right in close to the house. I don't really want to focus on the entire distance. I can zoom that to fit. If I didn't want to see the planting in here, because I really wanted to focus on the house itself, I could say visibility graphics and just turn off the, uh, where's planting? There it is. So there's going to be sort of a very common thing. Yes? When you make your crop region, does it show it? Ah, it should get into, there's two things. One is, is it turned on or not? <laughs> turned on means it doesn't have a little X there. The other one is this guy right over here with the uh, little uh, light bulb. If it's not showing up, try this. Try ZF for zoom to fit and see if it'll back out. Sometimes it's bigger than your window. Did you get it? Yeah. OK, excellent. Sometimes it's just outside the bounds of what you're looking at. Okay. If you don't want the levels to show, that would be a visibility graphics, so VG. And levels are actually, oh, they are an annotation category. So you can turn them off, too, to kind of clean that up a little bit. So there's going to be this whole thing, view, filter out things you don't want to show, always a visibility graphics, cropping, scaling, getting it to fit. And you put all those things together, and what happens at the tail end? It's where you need to end up, and that's that we're going to have some views that we can put on sheets. Now, I'll do it with these first views just to start with, and I'll show you how to create some other types of views. But let me just get these on sheets since we're so close to that, and I want to make sure we don't rush that at the end. Okay, You need sheets, and sheets show up under the View tab. You can say New Sheet. When you say New Sheet, it'll give you a choice of different title blocks. These are just actually you know, lines which are indicating how big the paper is that's going to print. Okay, I think we set you up with a title block in your drawing. Yours looks little, yours says CE 110, 210. This is the standard or everyone. Okay, got a title block. We are now ready to start going through and putting some plans on there. So, for example, if I wanted to put my dimension floor plan on there, which is cropped, which is a good thing, I can open the sheet. And what I'm going to do is just drag that into the sheet. And when you drag it into the sheet, you'll see it'll tend to fit if it's cropped nicely. 
If you have something that really just doesn't fit, it's hanging over the boundaries and stuff like that, go back and look at your scaling, look at your cropping, see if you can kind of make it a little bit smaller to get it to fit on the sheet. Okay, don't worry if it's filling up the entire sheet, that's okay. You know, sheets are relatively cheap, they're just virtual printing for what we're doing right now, so don't worry that you can't get like nine different drawings on a sheet. Okay, but at the same time, don't stretch your things out arbitrarily just to kind of get them to fill the entire sheet. Quarter scale is actually good enough. Okay, in a similar sort of way, we can say view, create a new sheet, let me create a second sheet. Notice the sheets have names too. So I can choose that, and I should give it a name. I can either name it over here in the title block. It's my floor plan. And the owner, that'll just be me. And the project name, that'll be my uh, research lab. So go ahead and get a name your project. Get all that stuff in there nicely so that when you turn in your sheets, we can figure out who you are and where it came from. I'll go over to the other sheet. Notice the name and the project and the name of the designer sort of showed up the same. This will be my elevations sheet. And for my elevations, let me just go ahead and pull in. Which one did I do? Did I do south? I think I did south, yes. <coughs> let me pull in south. If I try to pull in north, watch what will happen. Here comes north. Actually, north is not looking too bad. Looks like it's cropped fairly reasonably. Notice it has different settings because the visibility graphics are kind of sort of custom to each individual one. But let me show you a trick for sort of transferring that. If it turns out that you really, on the south, you've set up a group of settings you love so much you'd like to apply it to a number of the other views. What you can do is under the view tab, create something called the view template. And if I save view template, let me create a template from this view. It'll grab all the visibility graphic settings and the properties from that one view and let you apply them to another view. So this is Glenn's custom elevation settings. Okay, and with those, I can choose which of the things I want to have applied. Oh, it'll be quarter scale, but I want to bump it up to fine. That'll be good. So with that, I can now go over to north. North doesn't have those settings, but I can say apply a new template to the current view, and I can choose those settings. And when I apply them, it'll sort of carry it across. So view templates, again, don't worry that went by a little bit fast. What happens is view templates are really good just for grabbing a group of settings from one and kind of replicating it across the others, just so you have consistency. People tend to like consistency. Okay, let me give you a couple more appearance options just so you sort of know about these things because the whole idea of view, go through, highlight, filter, crop it, put it on a sheet, that's going to stay the same for every view I tell you about. Okay, but the last thing that you may want to start messing around with a little bit is even after you've gone ahead and placed them on the sheets, you can still keep tweaking around with the appearance. Actually, you can keep on doing the visibility graphics. Just get your views on the sheets and you can kind of keep on change the underlying view and then the sheets will just update themselves because you've already sort of set up how big it should be and where it should be located on the sheets. So for example, on these views, some different things that may help out. Okay, scale we talked about a little bit. This is the issue of coarseness. For the most part, for our models, it's not gonna matter very much. When we get to very big models, it'll matter if you can display things at a coarse level as opposed to a fine level, it'll render quicker. So only make it as detailed as you need it to be because it has an impact on your time for displaying things. There's a whole issue of whether you like things shaded or hidden or wireframed. And everyone just sort of has their own preference about this. Some people like things as hidden line drawings. Some people like the coloration. I tend to like color, but it's just sort of what I, I just respond well to color. Just decide what you want. There's also this notion here of whether or not the shadows should be turned on. Let me just turn them on to show you what that looks like. Okay, that'll just sort of give you a little bit of shadow information to help you understand what's poking out and what's poking back a little bit. So shadows is sort of a useful thing to turn on. It takes a little bit longer in terms of drawing them, but it's a nice thing for your final renderings to go ahead and turn those on. It just gives you a little more visual information. So again, if I go to the south and I say, let's go ahead and turn on the shadows, it'll give us a little information to work with. Now, what I would advise doing is 
you, you can use shadows for design. You might just use them as for part of your final like uh, presentation. Go ahead and leave them turned off most of the time. Just turn them on it towards the end because it will slow you down a little bit as you work to keep them turned on. So better to kind of leave them off and then just right at the last minute pop them on to kind of like give your presentation that last little jolt. Okay. So and as you do all those things. <coughs> Stan? They're at which point of what? Oh, actually, even within that, there's a whole group of settings. Let me kind of tell you a little bit about that, and then we'll let you experiment. In fact, we'll talk about this a whole lot more. There's graphic display options. There's this whole notion of casting shadows, and are they just sort of in the upper left-hand corner, or which is at 130, upper right-hand corner, 135, 35 degrees. So this is currently set up just to be sort of up there in the upper right-hand corner somewhere. But we can actually set it up so instead, for a specific time, date, and place, we can say Palo Alto on June 20th at 1135. And it'll be very, very precise, as long as we have our building oriented properly. So we'll get into more of that in terms of how you can control that when we start doing solar studies. OK, now that's the basic gist of getting these views. Let me just kind of show you a couple other sort of nuances of the other types of views. But the same message is going to ring true for all of them. It's all, you know, Put the camera where you want it, filter it, go through and annotate it, and finally just crop it and get it to fit on the table or to fit on the sheet. So let's talk about some of the other views and things that are available. A very common type of view that we work with is the elevation views. And as we've been working with the elevations, they've been defined by default. But let me just sort of tell you a little bit more about where they come from. Let me zoom on out. And you see these little markers hanging around on the sides. These are the elevation markers. And if you click on the head of one of those, you'll actually see where the elevation cut line is. So that blue line is where the camera is cutting in those elevation views. If you have this case where some of your model is missing, that sometimes happens because the blue line is actually partway through your model. And if that cut line is actually in your model, it'll be more of a section than it is an elevation. So watch out for the whole notion of these uh, blue lines and where they are. If you choose the blue line, actually that looks like it's just showing the whole extent. That one's cropped right now. You can even adjust the cropping by sort of pulling to the left or the right here. Okay, So elevations, you can go ahead and create more elevations if you want to. In fact, if you want to go through and create, for example, an interior elevation, I could zoom on in and say that I really want an interior elevation of this room. If I hover near a wall, it'll show me that. Okay, It's actually created an elevation for me over here. So here's the interior of that room right now. With the stair coming down, I can stretch it if I want to and crop it. But we can use interior elevations or exterior elevations. You can create new elevations. Uh, I'm going to sort of go quickly through that because just in the interest of the time for today, you know, like, uh, we can cover that in more detail a little bit later. But you can create different elevation views. Another type of view that's a very common one for you to want to create is a section view. And I've actually asked you to create a section view. So make sure at some point in your project you do this. Go to the View tab. Figure out what you think is the most interesting vertical relationship in your project. Choose section and just drag on through to help me see what that relationship is. When you create a section, you have the choice. Is it oriented towards the right or oriented towards the left? I can flip it if I want to. But for that section, which is shown up down here, you can take a look at that section view. Same things apply. I can make it quarter scale. I can choose the level of coarseness. I can decide whether I want to shade it, crop it. I can turn the shadows on or off. OK, so sections, the big issue is just cut it. But it's sort of where it starts out with all these use. Cut it, crop it, and then kind of filter it to kind of make it show what you want. Section, same sort of thing. We could add annotations to it. Once I've created my section view, I can go through and put it on a sheet. Maybe I'll even create a brand new sheet for that section view. 
and I'll pull that section in. Okay, so not much harm in that. Just going ahead and pulling things in. As long as you have them cropped nicely, you tend to be in pretty good shape. Okay, two other kinds of views I want to let you know about just a little bit. One is 3D views. Have, have you been playing around with 3D views much? In terms of what's going on? They tend to be fairly easy in terms of what's happening. There's two types you need to know about. One's the notion of these kind of 3D views which are on the outside of the building that we orbit around on. Here's what you need to know about these. If you have a specific view that you like and you want to save it so that we can kind of get back to it again really relatively quickly, you need to duplicate that view so that we can sort of save that camera position. The default 3D view will change every time and when you orbit it to a new position, you'll keep on changing the camera in the default 3D view. So if you have one that you want to keep, what you need to do is just do a duplicate. OK, and now I can go ahead and give this a name. And within this, the nice thing is, if I go back to the default 3D view and orbit it, the view that you've saved out will still maintain that original orientation. OK, so watch out for that. And for these, to get it to fit on your sheet, you're probably going to want to crop it. Show the crop region, zoom on out, and then bring that in nice and tight. So it'll show what we need to. Okay, with that view created, how do we get it onto a sheet? You know the answer to this. Just kind of drag it on in there. Beautiful. Okay, so that's a kind of regular 3D view. Let's also talk about a camera view. I think some of you have been playing around with these a little bit. Camera views take a little bit of work to get right. So for your camera views, if you're going to include one, let me encourage you. Outside camera views are pretty easy. Interior camera views are pretty hard, especially since our buildings are very small. It's hard to get a camera into the building and sort of be able to see enough without having a real distorted fisheye view. So if you want to create a camera view, just choose the camera tool. You'll place it out somewhere in the landscape and just pull towards where you want it to be. Okay, and then we have like a 3D perspective. But again, we can shade it, shadow it, whatever it is. And this view can also be pulled in there. Okay, sort of make sense? Okay. This is one, I think, through some practice this afternoon and at some of the alpha hours and stuff like that. I think you'll get the hang of creating these 3D views pretty quickly. It tends to be fairly quick and intuitive. You just got to sort of mess around with it a little bit. OK, let me go back to the sheets. And again, I can get that camera view in there. It's 3D view one. And I'll pop it in there. OK, and again. These are all dynamic views. Any view, any change I make in any of the model views is actually going to change all these sheets. So you're in pretty good shape there. So you're feeling pretty good in terms of creating different views and what you need to do for creating a floor plan and the uh, putting some dimensions on it, kind of creating a roof plan, some elevations of the exterior building. Okay, if you're feeling pretty good there, we're going to go ahead and practice that after the break.